A reading from the first book of the prophet Isaiah. The vision of Isaiah, son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the teaching of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord. I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of goats. When you come to appear before me, who asked this from your hand? Trample my courts no more. Bringing offerings is futile. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and calling of convocation, I cannot endure solemn assemblies with iniquity. Your new moons and your appointed festivals my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bringing them. When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rescue the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. 
Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Now when Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and proclaim his message in their cities. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Today's first reading is taken from the opening chapter of the book of Isaiah. It introduces several themes that will come back more than once as the story of the prophet and of his relation to God and to Israel unfolds. The reading gives us a sense of what is involved in a prophetic vocation, especially when the prophet's task is to criticize and to call his contemporaries to a religious and moral conversion. Like many of the prophets, Isaiah was caught up in the political and military, the moral and religious issues of his time and place. In spite of the obvious differences between the world in which he lived and our world, there are many parallels between the two. Issues of injustice and idolatry, violence and war are all as real today as they were when the great prophets were preaching and teaching in Israel. Today's reading introduces Isaiah and speaks of a vision or revelation that has been entrusted to him. What he has been commissioned to proclaim to the king and the rich and powerful of Israel and to the community as a whole. His word is not simply his. It is also the word of God. It is with this conviction that Isaiah urges those who are listening to him to hear the word of the Lord, to listen to the teaching of our God. Like Jesus, the prophets are people of the word. They have been called and sent by God to speak in his name. The Gospel of John describes Jesus as the Son who has been sent by the Father and who in turn sends the apostles to proclaim God's word. What began with the prophets and reached a high point in Jesus continues in the life of the church. The story of Isaiah has many parallels with that of Jesus. Both proclaim God's word amid opposition as they did so. In the Gospels, Jesus reveals himself as a prophet and as more than a prophet. He not only speaks God's word, he embodies it in his whole being. He is the word made flesh, the incarnate word. The prophetic word can take many forms. On the one hand, it can warn and threaten and sometimes condemn. On the other, it can be a word of encouragement, a word of promise and hope. Much of Israel, much of Isaiah's original message takes the first form, while later additions to his book are among the most positive and uplifting in the whole Bible. The reference to Sodom and Gomorrah, for example, underlines the moral and spiritual depth to which the people and their leaders have sunk. For anyone familiar with the story of those two cities and their destruction, Isaiah's fundamental message is clear. The people are guilty of sin and corruption to the point that God threatens and condemns them. A theme that Isaiah introduces at the beginning of his book is one that comes back repeatedly in the preaching and teaching of the prophets. Even as people continue to participate in the sacrificial and other rituals of the temple, including its rich cycle of yearly festivals, Isaiah accuses them of abusing and taking advantage of the poor and the vulnerable. 
The prophet recognizes and condemns the emptiness and hypocrisy of so much of their religious practice. Through him, God declares that their ritual sacrifices have lost all meaning for him. Trample my courts no more, he says. Bringing offerings is futile. Incense is an abomination to me. What God says about their yearly festivals as well as about their weekly celebrations is like a slap in the face. Your new moons and your appointed festivals, my soul hates, God declares. When you stretch out your hands in prayer, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Some of the prophets including Isaiah, are so critical of the temple and other rituals that people have wondered whether they were rejecting outright such rituals and practices. Today, most recognize that the focus of their concern was less the things in themselves and more the abuse of them. I cannot endure solemn assembly with iniquity, God declares. What the prophet condemns is the juxtaposition of religious ritual with a life of evil and sinfulness. Having challenged the people for their moral and religious failings, Isaiah offers a brief but eloquent summary of what God is calling them and us to do and to be. Wash yourselves Make yourselves clean, he urges them. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rescue the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. Any serious effort to lead a moral and with it a genuinely religious life has at its heart the twofold movement away from what is evil and destructive and towards what is good, what builds up others, what serves the cause of peace, justice, and general well-being. In baptism, we've received a share in the prophetic mission of Christ. The more we listen to his teaching and meditate on his example, the more chance there is that we will be instruments of the Spirit's renewal renewing activity in our midst. Pope Francis offers a wonderful modern-day model of the prophetic vocation. For him, ritual and life are inseparable. Even as he proclaims and celebrates the good news of salvation in Christ, the Pope calls on us to join with him in his concern for others. He encourages us to pray and work for victims of war and violence, of hunger and poverty, as well as for refugees and immigrants. He has written movingly of the need to confront the challenge of climate change and in doing so to care for our common home, the earth. He is a model for all of us. Let us.